is what? I ISS mailbag? ISS mailbag. And I'm Nicole Stott, special guest today. And and I'm Don Pettit. And Pettit. it's female bag today, too. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'm going to no, start no. that over. <laughs> Matt Milko, does the cupola ever face open space? It does. However. However. Why don't you share your experience about the however? Uh, cupola normally faces Earth. And when you open the windows, you see Earth with a little bit of space around the edges. However, during orbital maneuvers, the cupola may be pointing out into the vastness of space. But we're requested to keep the shutters closed so we can't look out the window during these maneuvers because rocket engines are firing on the outside of station to move it all around. And the rocket exhaust can get plumed on the, the windows if the shutters are open, and then that could spoil the transparency of the window. So typically, uh, whenever we can see something other than Earth, the shutters are going to be closed. And I think that's a shame. It because is. I think, you know, the, uh, the second part of that question is, uh, what, if so, what's your reaction to that view? And I think, you know, we get a little glimpse of that view, even through the cupola and other windows, by getting it really dark inside and kind yes. of looking out. And just because of what a wonderful observatory, I think, it's, aside from being a, a great operational workspace for the robotics workstation and, and the work we do from that cupola, the observatory is just wonderful, and the Earth views we have are just fantastic. And if I really think, both from an operational standpoint and as another observatory, we should have another one of those cupolas oh, up on the top side of the station. Let's do this guy. Okay, so Frank Barton, at F. Barton. What worries you most about living on the ISS? What worries me most? Um, I, th I think it's the... the the big three emergencies, <laughs> right? Fire, depress, and toxic atmosphere. Uh, you're living in a place where you can't roll down the windows or open the door and just run outside if, if things get foul inside. And you have to make great pains that A, these things don't happen in the first place, and B, if you are unfortunate enough to have these happen, you have to have the right kind of gear and training to know what to do in the event of, of one of these big three. Yeah, and I think, you know, I, I'm sure you probably experienced it while you were up there. We had several alarms go off while we were on station. And fortunately, they all turned out to be, for the most part, they all turned out to be false alarms. But it was really interesting to me to see, and um, I think very reassuring to see how your crew came together as you expected them to when that went on. And you treated it like a real thing until you knew it wasn't. And everybody went off, and just by what you did in training, everybody went off and did what you expected them to do. Just yeah. how you would, yeah. and managed it very, you know, um, deliberately, but calmly, and, and, you know, then came out the other end. And I think that's really cool how we can do that kind of training on the ground and learn how to work with each other and then get into that kind of environment that's real and react to it in a very you know, just kind of calm way to take care of the yeah. situation. Yeah, a, a very real and professional way. It, yeah. It's not like a fire drill in fifth grade where everybody knows it's just another fire drill and you kind of march outside and, and you know, you're playing with your yo-yo or something. Uh, when you get an alarm going off uh, on station, you treat it real seriously and you actually hope it's a false alarm because nobody wants to have a fire or no. depress or toxic atmosphere. Uh, that one didn't have a question. Max, he said, uh, he's from Argentina. He wants to talk to a real astronaut. Can't believe that, that uh, uh, he could do that through this. Uh, we're here. Uh, I think I'm real. Are you real? I know real? you're real. Okay. Uh, we, <laughs> it's well, hard to believe. I think we pinch ourselves every day that yeah. we are real astronauts. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that amazing? I get to fly in space I know. sometimes. Yeah. Uh, it's the world's uh, best job title, and on occasion, it's the world's best job. So anyway, Max, uh, next time, send in a question, and we'll answer it. Um, at Ron Dog 20 or XX, good morning. Have you ever seen space debris fly by the ISS? And if so, has it ever hit the space station? Well, I've seen, you know, I think one of the, the 
um, most interesting surprises to me was looking out the window at night and seeing what you know what we'd call a shooting star here where you look up and see a shooting star and to be able to look through the windows of the space station and see a shooting star below you and That's, then to think about it and say hey I am really happy that I'm seeing that shooting star below me because yeah. I know it's not hitting me <laughs> yeah. I had an, a similar experience but I was doing a spacewalk and I was looking down sort of between my legs at the time even though it's hard to actually look down and see between your legs in a spacesuit but I was looking down in that direction and I saw this meteorite burning up in the atmosphere below me and it looked like it shot right between my legs obviously <laughs> it didn't but it looked like it had done that um, so meteorites are obviously space debris um, You'll see other various sundry little flakes of stuff floating around, particularly with mm -hmm. space shuttles. Uh, there are, uh, space shuttles kind of like the pig pen in the Peanuts comic strip. There's always this big cloud of debris following it around, little bits of water, ice coming off, and other th bits of detritus and stuff. And you can see these things slowly float away. Space Station uh, um, uh, doesn't seem to have that, that issue, that trail yeah. of stuff. Although you mentioned the spacewalks, and a lot of times we'll go out and we'll notice, you know, small um, marks on a handrail or oh. something that they know has been noticed before, and then we'll do what we can to wrap up that place, like with a, a, a wire or a, a clamp now, to prevent other people from grabbing that spot that might have some sharp edge on it because of a small piece of debris that has has whacked the station. station. Yeah. yeah. And, and they make craters. Size. Yeah. They make craters. They're, they're zipping in at a high velocity. It, it's interesting the way orbital mechanics works. You can release something from station and what goes around comes around. So there's sort of orbital karma. And, and after a while, it's going to come back and it could whack station with high relative velocity and actually make uh, uh, make make some damage on station. So it's, it's bad news to release uh, release stuff if you're out on a spacewalk. You don't want to lose things. Yeah, inadvertently.